Once upon a time, there was a boy named Jimmy Livingston. He had a very unique condition. He had no immunity at all. Even a tiny germ could be dangerous for him, so he had to live in isolation. Jimmy couldn't touch anything without it being cleaned and decontaminated. To keep him safe, he had to live inside a big plastic bubble-like sphere for his entire life. Jimmy's mother, Mrs. Livingston, was very protective of him. She wouldn't even allow him to come home until he was four years old. But after turning four, they brought him home. And his room also had a huge bubble so he could move around inside it. There were special hands on the bubble that his parents used to touch him. All his toys were thoroughly cleaned to make sure they were germ-free before being kept inside the bubble. As Jimmy grew up, he lived his life inside that room. His mother was determined to never let him leave the bubble, so she would end bedtime stories with princesses dying because they were set free. Jimmy was allowed to watch only one TV channel and read one magazine because Mrs. Livingston believed they were the only ones in the world. Mrs. Livingston also used the extended arms of the bubble to cut Jimmy's hair and give him hugs. She taught him only what she thought was reasonable and forced her ideas on him, as she was an extreme nationalist. Everyone in the city knew about the unique bubble boy, but sadly, it didn't work in his favor. The other kids in the neighborhood made fun of him, wrapping themselves in plastic wrap to mimic his isolation. Mrs. Livingston frequently chased them away to protect her son from their teasing. Jimmy's meals were carefully prepared at home, and Mrs. Livingston made sure they were decontaminated before he could eat them. All his food went through a special system in a plastic tube to kill any germs. As Jimmy turned 16, he noticed a new girl named Chloe moving into the neighborhood. He liked her, but he couldn't do anything about it due to his confinement. In his isolated world, Jimmy remains oblivious to the intricacies of love and relationships. However, his infatuation with Chloe, a girl from the neighborhood, doesn't go unnoticed by his watchful mother. In an attempt to discourage any romantic feelings, Mrs. Livingston recounts a tragic story of a boy who met his demise after getting involved with someone considered undesirable. Despite his lack of knowledge about these emotions, Jimmy finds himself constantly observing Chloe through his windows, and to his surprise, she seems to notice him too. Confused by the changes he feels within, one morning, he wakes up with an unfamiliar bodily reaction and becomes frightened. Unaware of what's happening, he reacts impulsively accidentally hurting himself with a bat. Calling out to his mother, Mrs. Livingston enters and tries to comfort him by having him recite the Pledge of Allegiance until he calms down. Chloe, surrounded by a group of popular friends, joins in the teasing, labeling him as the bubble boy. Nevertheless, she also appears somewhat protective of him. One day, she knocks on the Livingston's door, and her curiosity leads her to explore the house's peculiar system of plastic tubes. Following one of these tubes, she reaches Jimmy's room which surprises and nervouses him, as his mother is the only woman he has ever interacted with. Despite the initial awkwardness, Chloe strikes up a conversation with Jimmy, expressing admiration for his guitar. Jimmy attempts to teach her how to play it, but in the middle of the lesson, he involuntarily starts reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Despite this quirk, they continue to spend time together daily, much to Mrs. Livingston's chagrin. Over time, a montage showcases their blossoming friendship with Chloe even visiting Jimmy on his birthday and Halloween. As Chloe's birthday approaches, she makes a drunken late-night visit to Jimmy's room, expressing her feelings and claiming she can't stay away from him any longer. However, before she can enter the bubble, she passes out. The scene then shifts to Chloe's prom night, where her boyfriend, Mark, exhibits inappropriate behavior towards her. Heartbroken, Jimmy witnesses them making out through his window. The following day, Chloe reveals her engagement to Mark, and shows off her engagement ring to Jimmy as their wedding is scheduled to take place at Niagara Falls. Despite feeling disappointed, Jimmy hides his true emotions from Chloe. As the day of Chloe's wedding draws near, she brings Jimmy a gift, which he ignores, returning her earlier present of a guinea pig. However, when he later opens the gift, he finds a snow globe with, I love you, inscribed inside. Overwhelmed with surprise, he calls out her name and decides to embark on a journey to Niagara Falls to halt the wedding. Determined to reach his destination, Jimmy works tirelessly to create a portable bubble shield. Once successful, he sneaks out of the house without his parents' knowledge. Excitedly, he experiences the thrill of running for the first time, reaching the bus station to purchase a ticket. Unfortunately, he realizes he has forgotten to bring any money. Distressed, he tries to cross the road but ends up being hit by a bus. Thankfully, his bubble saves him from harm. The people from the bus offer him a ride, but to his surprise, they are part of a religious cult. When Jimmy points this out, they angrily throw him out of the bus. Unbeknownst to Jimmy, the cult believes him to be their savior and begins searching for him to liberate him from his globe. 
Amidst his adventures, Jimmy encounters a biker named Slim, who becomes intrigued by his love story and shares his own tale of lost love named Wildfire. They decide to travel together to Niagara Falls. Back at home, Mrs. Livingston realizes Jimmy is missing and becomes frantic. She and her husband set out to search for him, knowing that the police will only intervene after 24 hours. As Jimmy and Slim make a pit stop in Vegas, they have a blast at a casino. But with only two days left before the wedding, Jimmy must hurry. He leaves Slim at the club, borrows a scooter, and sets off in a desperate rush. While traveling, he encounters his parents' car and attempts to avoid them, leading to an accident. Luckily, his bubble bounces him onto a moving train, evading his mother's grasp. Now trapped in a train, Jimmy finds himself surrounded by talented individuals from a freak show. In his encounter with the freaks, Jimmy learns about their captor, Dr. Freak, who exploits them in his freak show. By accidentally knocking the dwarf to the ground with his bubble, Jimmy liberates the other freaks before resuming his journey to Niagara Falls. However, his scooter is no longer usable, so he seeks help at a nearby restaurant. Inside, some police officers harass a man named Push Pop. When Jimmy discloses his lack of immunity, the officers fear a contagious disease and hastily leave the place. Chaos ensues, and a fire breaks out, prompting Push Pop to offer Jimmy a ride to Niagara Falls. Meanwhile, Mrs. Livingston reaches Dr. Freak, who informs her about Jimmy's destination. Enraged, she calls Chloe and berates her for Jimmy's escape. As she talks to Dr. Freak, the freaks outside steal her car. On their way, Push Pop and Jimmy encounter a cow blocking the road. Push Pop, following his religious beliefs, reveres cows as a symbol of God. But Jimmy, influenced by his mother's words, dismisses Push Pop's faith as false, deeply offending him. Push Pop decides to part ways with Jimmy. Eventually, Jimmy reaches New York and asks for a ride from an old man named Pippi, who agrees to help. The next morning, Jimmy realizes that Pippi is lifeless, and the car crashes into a billboard. Seeking refuge in a grocery store, he calls Chloe, only to be answered by Mark, who declares that he is about to marry Chloe within the hour. Feeling despondent, Jimmy calls his mother and asks her to come pick him up. Both of his parents arrive and get him into the car. While Mrs. Livingston is in the restroom, Mr. Livingston engages in a heartfelt conversation with Jimmy, expressing the joy of experiencing the outside world for the first time. He urges Jimmy not to give up without trying. Encouraged by his father's words, Jimmy musters the determination to run and stop the wedding. Witnessing this, Mrs. Livingston follows him in their car. Simultaneously, the cult group also locates Jimmy and begins pursuing him. Slim and his biker friends arrive to lend a helping hand in this dramatic and intense race to rescue Jimmy and put a stop to the impending wedding. In an unexpected twist, Slim locks eyes with Mrs. Livingston and realizes that she is his old love, Wildfire. As fate would have it, they are all driving on a plane's runway. A plane takes off, and Jimmy boards it with an experienced pilot, flying towards Niagara Falls. However, tragedy strikes as the plane crashes, causing Jimmy to plummet into the waterfall. Thanks to his trusty bubble, he survives the fall and manages to escape the water, determined to reach the wedding in time. Inside the chapel, Chloe and Mark are exchanging vows when Jimmy dramatically enters, professing his love for her. Aware that this is his final chance to persuade Chloe, he takes a daring risk and tears open his bubble to kiss her. Alas, he collapses right after the emotional moment. Chloe tries to revive him, and just then, Mr. and Mrs. Livingston arrive at the scene. As Mrs. Livingston mourns her son's supposed demise, Mr. Livingston urges her to reveal the truth. Sheepishly, she admits that Jimmy doesn't have any medical condition, and to protect him from the world's dangers, she had deceived him all those years. Shocked but understanding, Jimmy forgives his mother, realizing her intentions were to shield him. Finally, with the truth out in the open, Jimmy embraces Chloe, and the crowd applauds their reunion. A few months later, Chloe and Jimmy tie the knot surrounded by all the individuals he encountered during his eventful journey. Mr. Livingston, Mrs. Livingston and Slim have formed an unconventional throuple. As the movie concludes, we see Jimmy and Chloe driving away in a car, embarking on their honeymoon, marking the beginning of their new life together.